Hi everyone, and uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for waiting. Uh, it was uh, really unfortunate that uh, one of our speakers is a bit late today. Um, welcome to Ilham Gallery. Um, and this talk is um, in conjunction with the We Will Have Been Young exhibition, uh, which is um, the work that you see around you and outside. And this was a program that um, along with the Goethe Institute in Malaysia and the Oscarites Photographers Agency with Obscura Festival put together. It was a one-year program where we worked with uh, photographers from Southeast Asia for a whole year through a masterclass residency at the festival in 2016 through to 2017. They produced this work and this work now is a traveling exhibition and a very, very, very beautiful um, photo book that's here, right? We'll, I will talk about this also a little bit in a short while. Um, the exhibition started in Penang at Obscura 2016 and it's already gone to Singapore. Sorry, 2017, yes, thank you. Um, it's already shown in Singapore, um, Bandung, Jakarta, Manila, it's here and it will go to Frankfurt in March uh, next year and uh, that's when all the artists will be actually going to Frankfurt as well to represent the work and also to get their portfolio seen by uh, German, uh, you know, just very important people in the, in the German art and photography uh, scene over there. Um, so yeah, so today we're here to talk about um, this thing called photo books, right? And uh, we're going to probably discuss. Somebody asked me earlier what's the difference between a photo catalog and a photo book, and I think that was quite a challenging thing to talk about and answer. I, I'm just happy I had a quick um, answer for that. Um, and I, I just want to recapture something uh, Edin Ku said about two weeks ago. Uh, he said, like, um, one of the issues with uh, Southeast Asian uh, history and culture is that it's not captured in writing or in the print form uh, with regard to with, with regard to um, uh, how it's done in the West. Um, rather, our history, our narratives and our culture is usually captured in performative arts and in song, as well as um, uh, through uh, verbal uh, presentations in terms of stories and stuff like that. So uh, we are not a culture that um, usually uh, prints stuff. And by virtue of that, after 57, uh, our independence, um, prior to that, we've had a lot of uh, Malaysia and our culture being documented by people from outside Malaysia, mostly. And then after 57, there's been a big drop in um, the interest in actually documenting and more importantly, self-documenting. Because uh, when the colonial masters were here, they were the ones doing all the photography. There were amazing photogra photographers from Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, sh a lot of photographers from Shanghai down here photographing Malaysia, you know. But the thing is, the story of Malaysia by Malaysians is still something that doesn't really quite exist in our culture. And uh, this is something that, you know, um, is peculiar to our culture, but also something which I think moving into the 21st century and beyond, we really need to start representing ourselves, our own stories, the way we see it, our narratives. I think this is really important. So. The We Will Have Been Young show, in a way, is that. It's a collective of work by 12 um, photographers from Southeast Asia telling Southeast Asian stories. And uh, what we have in front here is a very, very interesting uh, collection of work uh, that has been, um, you know, it's just been passion projects by many, many different photographers, designers, publishers, um, all independently made, independently funded, and I think they uh, create a really wonderful snapshot of um, who we are and where we are right now in the process of uh, photography as an art form, uh, but also documenting and publishing. So I would like to quickly invite um, um, Mr. Hafiz Hamza from Obscura Malaysia um, to take a seat anywhere you like. Um, 
and uh, Nick Adam, uh, who uh, is a So um, we've known each other because of photography and because of bookmaking. Uh, actually, by virtue of that, right? I mean, otherwise we would have never met. Um, and there's Nadia Mafix who's going to be taking the seat. Um, she's uh, a very busy mom, and uh, she's been trying to get time away. So uh, I hope you understand, uh, you know, the duties of a mother. So yeah, she'll she'll be here shortly. Um, so. Uh, Welcome, guys. Yeah, thank you. Hi, thank you. Us. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Thanks for sharing your work um, with us. So um, maybe I, I'll tell you a little bit about what I know about these two guys, and uh, maybe they'll tell you about themselves after that. So um, Hafiz runs Obscura Malaysia, and in 2013, when I started Obscura Festival, uh, I put something up online. I got an email, <laughs> I, and <laughs> probably one of the first ever emails to get. They say, "Hey, you know." I see this Obscura Festival thing, uh, and it was from Hafiz. I see this Obscura Festival thing, and I run this thing called Obscura Malaysia. And I was like, oh, right, interesting. So what's this about? And that's how we got to know each other. Yes. And we started a dialogue, and we've been friends since. Uh, so Hafiz does a lot of things. Uh, he publishes uh, books through Obscura Malaysia that include photography books as well as um, translations of important literature as well as uh, it's, uh, like uh, important writings uh, in, in, in text form. It's uh, mostly in Malay. Mostly in Malay, oh. yeah. But you've also done a bit of uh, translations of... Uh, yes, from, from English, from other yeah. language, into Malay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, Nick uh, Adam, or I just call him Adam, uh, also we met through the photo book scene, and uh, he works right now with uh, Fixie, which is a, a very uh, is a leading uh, publisher for uh, fiction uh, writing in Malaysia. But uh, uh, Adam himself um, is also a photographer and uh, has uh, you know worked with uh, self-publishing work and also uh, designing and publishing things for other photographers. And we'll just get into that a bit later. But yeah, so um, over to you, um, Hafiz, and uh, you know maybe. Tell us a little bit more about um, how you, w where you're from and how you got into yeah. this. So basically, since I think 2012, I've been running Obscura Malaysia, uh, focusing mainly on Malay literature. We have translated work, um, fiction, essays, and all that. But on the other side of me also, I'm very interested and very enthusiastic about photography. And I do have uh, two photo zines, so-called has been published so far uh, for um, this past five years. And one, the latest one is uh, just a mock-up, the black one. Um, yeah, so to start with, with that, that is that okay? Yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah, fine. <laughs> and uh, Adam? Okay, uh, hi. Uh, well, I'm actually my, my main business is Buku Fitsi. So I, my main focus is uh, Buku Fitsi, uh, but then uh, what started as a hobby, photography, uh, and also cameras. We uh, we met. Uh, I met with Hafiz, so we share the same things. Hafiz and all different friends, and then we we started to get in, uh, got introduced with uh, photo books from international inter international photo books, and also photo zines zines from Japan. So we were we were like, okay, what? What should we do with our photos? Should we just uh, capture image and then just skip it, or do we do a self-publish? Right. So we do the self-publish thing. So that's how I started, and also along that way we try to get another photographers who who want to join us, and we will try to publish also their works if uh, if uh, permitted. So I started a publishing house. Different publishing for photography only. It's uh, called Kudalari Press. Thank you. And uh, w just, just uh, for some of maybe our audience, what is self-publishing? Okay. What does it mean uh, in terms of uh, what is it? But also, what is it in context of uh, Malaysian pub publishing laws, for example? You know, I like. Um, okay. Because uh, I certain is a. Uh, Self publishings or independent publishing is a is a very wide uh, and very different in certain countries also. But I think I can speak for the Malaysia 
uh, culture. Uh, independent is a independent or self publish is okay like self publish ah self publish for photographer photography is like you capture the Im you capture the photograph and then you buy your own money and also your you you edit your own stuff you buy your a printer <laughs> uh, actually we we buy a printer because it's very hard to find a printer uh, industrial printer to print for us so we buy our own injects and then we print it print it and we compile and we staple and we publish so it's a zine but in, in form of a photography so that is a, i think self publish independent is like uh, it's a m bigger bigger but uh, self funded uh, companies uh. but for me Vic, i think why i started to pay attention to photo zines photo book because um, at certain extent malaysian our 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 culture or our market um, we always pay attention to those are uh, like really proper publishing kind of stuff like coffee table books that's what that we can get easily yeah. but why this uh, independent publishing is really important to me because we can decide what we want to put out because if it's up to the market or the big publishing house you will not see those uh, zines or books absolutely out by now of course, it is a very small circulation, but what I'm trying to do is to get things started to show that these things are important. Because for me, it, um, personally, um, I, I see these zines or project, uh, independent project, it's really important in a sense that it, it creates a sense of purpose for me. Because when we start taking pictures, making photographs, it's always like... Uh, you spend energy, you put money in there. So these are like a purpose so that you can sit down and try to produce something so that it will last and you can share it with your crowd. And that's very different from a photo album like, or, or, or something that you put on, say, Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. And why is it different? How is it different? Okay. <laughs> okay, for me, why is different is uh, photo album is basically a uh, collections of photograph you be taken like a family album so you just you need to put somewhere so you buy an album so you just chuck it together and call it a photo album but for for me the photo zines or photo books is like a writing fiction or writing uh, articles but in form of photograph so that's how I treat my zines at least uh, so uh, I want to share okay it's it's like a exhibition, what we what you, what you yeah. do exhibition, but in more it's, but you can reach more larger crowd and it's more cheaper, you know yeah. So it's a it's like a story, but in uh, it's like a fiction, but it's in a it's photo form, the picture form, picture form yeah. For me maybe for me it's quite different because. Other than photography, I also have been published two um, collection of poetry, my own poetry. So in a way, uh, photography for me, I see it as an uh, extension of it. Um, not merely to tell a story, but I think it really uh, teach me to, l to learn how to see things with all honesty. So that's, I think, uh, what my focus and anchor is when I'm planning or deciding to work on a certain photography project and most of it will take a very very long time as we speak I think I have like working projects small projects like three or four which is still unfinished I don't know how I will when I will finish it but it is totally a diff different from what photo album is because that one maybe we didn't we didn't put so much thought on it we just really a fast paced kind of thing but for photo book for photo project it's totally deliver a different kind of purpose i think yeah the design aspect in photo book making is also an important uh, signifier and how it's different from the album isn't it yeah. because there is a very real uh, awareness to what kind of paper you use, what kind of budgets do you have, uh, what kind of binding, uh, the kind of uh, you know, fonts, designs and stuff like that. Uh, and I think that's also something which 
I, I, is quite evident in the collection of books there, which is quite interesting. I mean, I think Hafiz, right? You, you came up with the thing about uh, how in Malaysia, photo books, I mean, you talk about photo book to a, ma a person on the street. They understand it as a um, coffee table book, but they would not really imagine that, you know, and coffee table books come in only in one shape and size, literally, right? And they probably wouldn't imagine that you could have these things that you can put into your car glove compartment, the back pocket, into your, into your, into your, you know, your bag, uh, easily, easily distributable um, as a photo book, you know. And I think that this is quite an interesting thing about independent bookmakings because you are, I think the only thing you're governed by is by the budget. How much money you have? Yeah, I think most of the time, yes, I would admit that that is quite a, a, a barrier for us. But that's the best part of when you, when you do things, you, you're, you're passionate about it, you will find a way how to put it out. So, and independent publishing teach us that, I mean, force us to, to, to do that. So, as you said, uh, in terms of material, yes, that's one aspect that why I like it when, when I do it myself because we can really experiment it with different papers, how to print it, different tone, setting of printers. Like um, for one photo zines, a very simple one you see there, I think normally I will come up with a mock-up more than five or six before I decide to go with the final format, the final feel of it. So yeah, th these are the, the things that really Beautiful about self-publishing, I think so. Yeah, what we just said about uh, governed by budget, that's that's a true one thing. Also, but we also were governed by. Uh, I think we are limited by our resources, uh, our papers, and also printers. Uh, so, if you if you have budget, also you cannot print if you don't have printer. So in Malaysia, we don't have a. Uh, Printer who we are, there are not so many printer who can help us in terms of making art books because it's we want to make it as low budget as possible so that we can sell as cheap as possible so that it can be distributed wider. Uh, but so there's there's a certain limitations to it, Yeah, uh, I lost my th my train of thought, but um, I, I think. That's the thing um, about these photo books, right? If you look at what's on the bench there, the themes are quite wide, right? Very wide themes. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. and I think that's the beauty of it because the thing is, uh, one of the things is that you can really make a book about anything you want, yes. right, you know, and there's no real stopping you. And uh, with, a, with the difference between, say, a big publisher, they're always looking at the bottom line. Can I make money from this or not? Mm -mm. Right? Can I sign up this person? Uh, will he make money for me? Will she make money for me or not? But with independent publishing, with self-publishing, it's really about having conviction in the project that you have and in, in what you're making and believing that there are people out there who you want to share work with, who want this work to be seen, who want to buy it, who want to collect a piece of history, a piece of art. You know, and, and to be able to communicate maybe with, not with the masses, but at least with a bunch of people who get what you're doing. And, and, and I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah, because uh, just to share, when we, I started it, I think 2012, 2013, um, most people are asking me why you want to put out a photo zines, photo book, because the market is not there. The, the, the basically, you are wasting money, energy, but what I realized a few years down the line is when you have a few titles that you all uh, consistently bring out to events or whatever, the exception, the, the, the crowd start to come. Understand so what you're doing. Yeah. Now, until now, and uh, best that you mentioned about the cost. For me, uh, for the few titles that we've been put out so far, I didn't lose my money. I make some money of it. So what I'm trying to say is, um, we just try, need to try and put out what 
things that dearest to us and then yeah the crowd will come in and people will learn about it we will agree or disagree that's different story but we need to do to reach out and that's what photo book is yeah, yeah. And, and in terms of uh, self publishing your own photography um, how do you decide what you want to put into a book format because i'm quite sure there's more of what you've been photographing uh, so the thing is, um, how, I mean, what are the considerations? So because it cannot be just about what I want to do and I don't care. Everybody has to like you know, yeah. But so what is this? Um, what are the considerations? Are there any and uh, you know, the difficulties? Yes, for me, that's what will force me to learn. I will look back into the those like really professional kind of work because those from Magnum Photos last time. Why would they put out such things? So. In a way, we try to develop ourselves, how to see things, mm -hmm. and yeah. Hi, Nadia. <laughs> Good timing. Yeah, come. What is it? Tepo, tepo, tepo. So um, yeah, just introduce uh, Nadia J. Marfix, uh, photographer. Um, and also um, really ferocious uh, bookmaker. I mean, she's got what, four books? Um, three, actually. Three books, three books, but a whole bunch of variations of books, right? Yeah. Yeah, so she's got three books, but I think those books come in very different variations and uh, they've been adaptations and uh, result of adaptations of uh, previous concepts and designs into new stuff. So we'll come back to Nadia in a short while and maybe Nadia can tell the stories. Uh, what we're talking about right now is uh, how do we decide what goes into a photo book as in uh, of all the projects that we do. Um, why do we put certain works into a book and some not? So Hafiz was just uh, sharing a little bit with us. Are you done? Or? Yes. Okay. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a different kind of process um, because uh, me and I, I'm I'm close with uh, my friends, also our friends, uh, Shafiq. So he he got he his hobby is uh, printing. So he spent his money uh, buying printers, all sorts of printers and papers and all. So uh, because I always hang out with him, so what what we did is we what we decide to print is based on what do we what materials do we have what kind of printers do we have at the moment when we got the risograph so we start to experiment experimenting with uh, this type of uh, photos uh, which are very suitable to print in risograph and also it's based on this is the riso one right yeah, yeah. This yeah. Is and the this one this one uh, yeah. Riso, and this one yeah, yeah. so uh, just just so, so you know which are the risos yeah. uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the riso is and uh, what what is yeah, different okay. about Rizzo printing. Rizzo is a is a it's a old technology which uh is a it's like a dye dye ink print, but in uh how to say uh, uh you know how how you dye your t-shirt with the screen, okay so this screen is in a photocopy machine called Rizzo. so it it can uh it's automated and it can be you can use it to print uh in uh, in a bigger quantity, it's uh, it's like what they used in the school those days to print to copy the exam papers. Uh, so it's a lo-fi kind of yeah, it's printer. Okay. It's very lo-fi. It's uh, it's like it's like a cheap. Uh, what? It's it's like a cross between a printer and a photocopy machine. Yes, it's like a yeah. duplicator. Yeah. And uh, the reason for the Rizzo to exist was because people wanted to be able to duplicate uh, whatever they were making uh, in a smaller volume because the Gutenberg press was just, you know, it was it would fill a room like this. You know, it's a huge machine, right? Yep. And uh, so um, I think this was, uh, I think, a very successful uh, printing form for a very long time because it was a lot cheaper, a lot smaller, and uh, easier to handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's cheaper than offset, and it's uh, smaller than offset. It's, uh, it's like a photocopy machine. Yeah. Like all. Uh, so, uh, Shafiq, he like we all we collect cameras. He collect printers. So he bought this print printer from China, shipped from there. 
So we were like very excited. So we start to use the printers, testing, experiment. So that's how we came out with this zine. So because of the because of the Riso character itself, it's very uh, it's very rigid. It's very so we, I try to match the 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 character of the printer with uh, this photograph uh, style. So that's how I that's how I choose which photo is for what for what books. Yeah, so it's very much process driven <laughs> to figure out what will look good on Riso yes. and to print that. Yeah, interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah, and Nadia. Um, yeah, you've, you've made a whole bunch of books. Not really a whole bunch, of like maybe three. <laughs> yeah, but the process of making those three, you made so many more, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you've had like so many uh, versions. So tell us a little bit about your motivations, because you've um, um, made books that you've sold at art fairs, you've sold it uh, just by hand, you've made hardcover, you've made softcover, you've also made a uh, special edition for an art show, mm -hmm. right? So the thing is, uh, you've obviously experimented in the form, the book form, in very different applications. So tell us a little bit about, um, a little bit, a bit about your photography, but also uh, how and why does that, why is it important for you that it exists in the book format? Um, well, actually it happened by accident because at first, my first book that I did uh, that is this the end because um, it was also uh, incidentally the time when uh, Obscura first started 2013 because I wanted to join the workshop and then so I don't have any portfolio so I, instead of putting my photos in like uh, an album or something like that I mean files so I thought that maybe maybe it would be interesting to uh, get it printed uh, in a book form so. Um, I, uh, I asked my friend, uh, I mean our friend Shafiq. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, same, same guy. Same dude. Printer guy. Yeah, and then um, so we started to choose photos and what kind of photos uh, that represent my, st uh, my style of photography. And then so is this the end happened? And the book is, is it, of course, the book is somewhere there, right? Yeah. yeah. So and then um, I wanted. Because um, uh, most of my, uh, the su usually my su the subject matter for my photos is usually like death, somewhat. So I wanted the book to be like um, uh, in the form of like, I want it to, do, to look almost like uh, the, the Bible or the Quran or it's just some holy book, holy scripture. Mm. Oh, yeah. okay. uh, shall I help you with that? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so and then... Um, and then uh, we got them printed, and then we I brought it to uh, the festival, and then I showed it to some people, and then uh, they told me that they are interested to uh, buy my book. So I was like, oh, maybe I should like print some more. And then so we printed about maybe fifty cop fifty copies, I think. And then um, and we we sold everything by hand. I mean, like it's a most of it is like a DIY stuff, like. So yeah, and then from from this book, and then uh, I did a uh, workshop with Maggie. So I did uh, we printed the zine. Uh, it was in a different format. Okay. Yeah, but this is the second uh, the second version of it. The first version was printed uh, using the Risucraft method, but I don't have a copy of it. You don't have a copy no. of it. No, but nobody have a copy of it. You you have a copy of it. No, no? I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah. but. So this is the second version that uh, we printed with. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So and then um, me. That was uh, another exhibition, right? And the one that uh, we did persona, persona yeah. in two thousand fifteen. Yeah, two thousand fifteen. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I did uh, different. Uh, I took a different method and did a list, um, accordion. Yeah, accordion. Yeah. So this is like really, so really the book, comp wait, how you open. book is kind of like an accordion based. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, it's an accordion based form. So it's a very different experimentation yeah. with the very work. Yeah. Very complicated process. Complicated to do. and very <laughs> like. Uh, 
I regretted choosing that. Were you, were, you, uh, were you involved in the making of this book? I'm, I'm not involved with this, but uh, the accordion process is very complicated. That's why I don't want to get involved with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good choice. So, also Rizzo. This is also Rizzo, right? Um, no, no, no. No, it's not Rizzo. Inkjet, yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about this story, this book. Uh, this is, uh, the, book is, the book is called uh, The Undiscovered Self. It's supposed to be like a diary or some sort of a diary. So, you just... I don't know. Yeah. There's a bit of text. Uh, yeah, and photos. the photos were taken on? Uh, various various uh, camera. I mean, like phone, from phone, from uh, screenshots on, on the laptop or something. And a lot of film. And this Both is. Photos of photo. Yeah. <laughs> and this is uh, more. T- Oh, I remember this. A lot of this work were Facebook posts as well. Yes, some of it. Yeah, so a lot of the work. So this is very interesting because some of this stuff here was actually things she put on Facebook and then she just uh, screen captured the thing because it was a, I mean, almost a timestamp about yeah. how you felt and uh, yeah, what. That's why, yeah, that's why it's like uh, I, came, I came to this, I came to this one, uh, yeah, this image. Yeah. yeah, this is so powerful. Do you mind if I read it? Uh, okay. Or not? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Can you read it? Yeah, I can. I think. Uh, it's a picture of a mop on the floor. <laughs> it's a picture of a mop on the floor. There's a reason why I want to read this to you. If you view it from the right angle, it almost resembles a sunflower. For whatever, nevertheless, or no, it resembles a sunflower or whatever, nevertheless, a flower. Back when they, hello, (laughs) back when they were dating. He used to give her flowers almost 40 years down the road. This is the closest thing to a flower she gets from him. And I think it's, uh, I mean, there's a bit more, but I'm not re- reading that. Um, I, I, think, I think this is why I wanted to read this. I don't know why. I think the page found me. Uh, but this, uh, to me, was one of the most moving pieces uh, in the book that I, uh, I mean, I had. <laughs> yeah, we had, we had a chance to work together on yeah, this yeah, book. Yeah. So, um, and I think this also kind of like underlines the, the power of uh, independent publishing and also self-publishing is that some very, very important things uh, can be said, it needs to be said. And some things that are so personal to us and so private to us when you have the courage, and we'll talk about courage later because I don't have any courage. Um, w- uh, w- you have the courage to put this out. It has a possibility to resonate with somebody else. You know, and I think, uh, it, if anything, I think this is what in Malaysia we're missing. We've got national narratives, we've got you know corporate narratives, but our story is always the one that nobody hears. And uh, Professor Ku Kei Kim, when we were doing Confluence in 2014, he had said this to me. He says the role of the historian is to take documentation like this, to understand it, and then to write about it. But if people do not make these documentations, then we have nothing to write about as historians. Because historians don't write history. They learn about what, what these documents hold. And uh, he said, if Malaysians don't learn to write their story, the government is going to write it for them. And all the people in power, someone is going to write it for you. Someone's going to write your story. It used to be the colonialists, the British, the Dutch, it, uh, now it's the corporations, uh, it's governments, it's, 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 you know. But the thing is, your story has a value. And I think this is where the independent photo book is, is actually really powerful. So, um, yeah, so back to Nadia. And uh, how, how, how many more um, versions of this book exist? Which one? The, this one? The accordion? I uh, know, all, all the books. I mean, like, h- how, many, um, how, how many copies did you make of each? Uh, Do you remember? Well, for the first version, uh, this one I, I made about eighty copies. Eighty. Yeah, uh-huh. eighty. Yeah. Eight zero. Eight zero. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the the smaller one, I I made about maybe twenty twenty five. Uh huh. I think. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this one is uh, this, this is a limited, right? It's yeah, very limited. limited. Yeah. Uh, I made about thirteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's about it. And how many have you sold? Um, the the first book I sold about uh, I made I sold eighty all eighty copies. Yeah. And then for the second version, we only managed to make ten copies. Uh huh. Because um, yeah, our printer went MIA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which happens. <laughs> yeah. So and then for the the <coughs> the reso version of the second book. Uh, I sold all 25. That's why I don't have uh, my a own copy. copy. Yeah. Yeah. Even I don't have the money, uh, my own copy for the first version of the existian. Yeah, crazy. So, yeah. so always make copy for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for for talks like this. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> At least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, yeah. I I think I think it's really. Uh, you know what? I'm going to pause right here. Does anyone have a question for any of our panelists? Yes, please. Very quickly. Something that wasn't un- what was unclear, or you know, you want to share something, but whatever it is, just make it very brief because uh, we don't have much time. Yes, no, no, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just really briefly, um, aside from maybe the monetary value of producing photo books and stuff. Um, is that the only reason you would put one out in this day and age? Um, because I'm asking because now the advent, everybody knows social media, everything, blogging platforms and everything are out there to showcase your work, curate your work in such a way. Is there still a need to do photo books? Um, aside from my question, the monetary value, especially if you're self-publishing yourself with all the money that goes into it and you can only produce you know, 50 copies, 80 copies. Mm-hmm. Right, and what are your margins on that? So yeah, is it just purely monetary value to promote your work? Uh, well, for me personally, it's not just—it's not for money actually. It's just more on like, it's just a, a satisfaction of seeing your your book in print, and also it's not just like you simply uh, print any any photos, but you must choose your own. I mean, there's, there, mu- there must be like a visual narrative to it, like it's like a storybook, but only in visual form instead of words. So for me, um, why I uh, do, I mean, I print photo books just for my own um, satisfaction. I and, then, um, and then the money is just the plus side. Because honestly, I don't make much money by printing the photo books. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, um, the great things about putting your photograph on printed materials is you give it a life like permanently because I do take, I mean, most of us do take a uh, digital photograph, we keep in hard drive, uh, Facebook, but after some time, we totally forgot about it. It, it. it happens to me as well. Until I decide I want to work on some projects that I go back to those uh, photographs, then I realize uh, I actually have so much things that I took like five years ago that can be used and to, to complement, to enhance the whatever storyline or whatever project that I'm working now. So it's always great to look back at your own photograph and only then to rethink how to put it on a sequence, on an edit basis for the purpose of putting out a photo book. So I think that is invaluable. This is okay. more model. I think uh, in terms of monetary, it's never, never the main objective. Okay, but uh, for me, it's, uh, it's about the process of uh, how you how you edit your photograph to make it a visual story, and then the process of uh, printing, test print, and uh, to make it uh, very interesting. That's that's uh, the fun part, the set most satisfying part, and also it's like a. I I I don't have a photo book, uh, so this one is the photozines for me is like a a training for me, so that I I learn how to uh, edit my photos and also how to incorporate a visual story into my work. So then, when I'm ready, I can make my photo book. Yeah. Um, just to share a little bit about the we will have been young book. Uh. This is a, like a, a hybrid book because it's neither a catalog nor is it a monograph. Uh, it's somewhere in between uh, and because it's in commemoration of the exhibition. And what was important for me when we put this idea for the masterclass and the exhibition together was that 
in two weeks from now, the show will be gone from KL. Uh, the show left Penang in, fr a year ago, and it's always traveling. Uh, photo exhibitions like this are very expensive, and they are very temporal. They only exist for a short while. But the book exists for a much longer time. It is something that exists in your bookshelf. It's something that you can gift. It's not expensive, a book like this. Uh, given how much effort and work that has gone into producing something like this, it's actually very, very, very affordable. And I think the stories and the importance of the narratives that we see here, this is one experience that you can have to come to an exhibition, a beautiful gallery like this, to see the work up there. Um, but the book represents its own uh, experience itself. And also, once the exhibition is gone, the book still exists, you know? And it becomes, it, it's a more substantial historical document, you know, uh, where you can see a work like this on, only in a gallery because it won't fit your house. Um, well, some of your houses might fit the work, um, but uh, not mine. Um, but then the book is something that exists for a long time. And I think that's also very important. So I, I just also want to ask the three of you, um, you know, the, the, your books were made between uh, about five years, three to five years, right, ago, uh, or some a bit more recent. But in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, I mean, like, where do you see these books? I mean, like, uh, in terms of uh, how would you envision them to exist in our society? And uh, what, what, um, what benefit? There's, would those books bring to 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 society? In, I mean, because the thing is, there are. I mean, the the stories. I mean, we spoke a little bit about Nadia's work, but the other stories. I mean, half is your work is largely about family, yes. and very very rooted in family, in your tradition, in your culture. So the thing is, it's important work, you know. So the thing, uh, what what is, where where do you see the work, and what what importance do you hope to see this work bring? Uh, in the future, reflection and understanding is something that I want to tap into a little bit more. Um, maybe you can start with uh, uh, Adam. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, most things that I've photographed for these past few years, I realize it's always been people or events that really close to me, family for the fact. Um, what I try to do with those work is actually to, I mean, firstly, it's for me to learn about myself. It's always that is my anchor point. And hopefully throughout that process, um, I can share it back with uh, the audience. And mostly, for me, it's always, in, in a way, it's uh, looking into a Malay culture that of family values that we have now and how to fit in into this kind of modern world and how to react to that. So th those photographs always reflect back on me on that aspect. So I don't know about documentation or where it's placed in a society, but to me, I, I need to see it really in an honest perspective and to, to learn about it and maybe to put it back on. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for me, it's, uh, it's about uh, documentations, the importance of documentations. Although my photograph is not that is is not uh, well known or what, but I hope uh, in the futures, um, because I it's already distributed uh, in the market. So I hope one day, uh, in one person, maybe ten years later, they they will find in some uh, other people's shelf, and then they were like, wow, this is. Uh, a documentation of flat perkeliling that never documented before, right? So I hope it's, it will bring memories or something to the people itself, uh, like uh, like how the Americans, yeah. you know, the Americans. The it's a book by uh, Robert Frank, Robert Frank. Uh, so that he went in his car during the uh, Depression and photographed America, and it's like the cornerstone and turning point about American America and American photography uh, at the time. And the, the funny thing is Robert Frank is actually Swiss. Yeah, yeah so it's interesting. He, 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 he had a grant from the Guggenheim 
uh, and he used that money to buy a car and go down. So yeah, back yeah, to you. So so that's what I I I don't hope to achieve a photograph like Robert Fan, but I think the the importance, in, of, importance the of the documentation. Documentation, for example, like this is a, uh, what I photograph a flat Pekali Lane before it was demolished totally. So one I think few years two years back uh, I got a request from. Architect uh, Association Malaysia. They they wanted to showcase the this work because of flat perkeliling. Because lots of people take photos of flat perkeliling, but then it's all about one one piece, uh, one photo kind of thing. So never a story like this. It's like uh, it's this one is titled Tinggal. It's a ab abandonment. So. That's why they want wanted to showcase, but something went off, so <laughs> never never went to showcase. So I hope in ten years future, someone we uh, we need to we need to revisit the flat clean because it's very iconic to to KL, even though it's it's not very beauty. Oh, I think it's immensely yeah, beautiful. Gone, yeah. The Pakaling flats is. Um, uh, for those who don't know, uh, the first uh, urban housing scheme in Kuala Lumpur uh, that was done in the 60s under uh, the Prime Ministership of uh, Tun Abdul Razak. And uh, it has stood to be the biggest and most uh, iconic of uh, buildings in KL. And that was raised to the ground uh, over the course of a few years. And now they're building a whole bunch of things, including the new MRT station. Yeah. And also, it's like, uh, it's a, it's in term of architect view, the building is very important because it's the first building in Malaysia designed as a it's like a block uh, it's like a Lego block you know they put yep. uh, piece by piece so it's quite important in architect history itself. Yeah. And the workmanship on that building was just insane. I like I went there after they knocked it down. I mean like knocked parts of it down and ripped everything from the inside out. And uh, it, the structure of the building was this in. Just like the way it was built on the first day, it was just very, very beautifully built building. Yeah, very gorgeous. Um, yeah. So, um, any any questions? Um. So, what are your view about um the publishing of uh photo books in Malaysia as a whole? Um, cause I don't really see much photo books being published in Malaysia, so yeah. What do you think about that? For me, yeah, that's the thing. There's a lot of work to be done yet. <laughs> so what we've done, what we've seen here, is uh, probably just a st starting point of maybe perhaps for a better and um, proper workflow, like. We can conduct personally, or the, just to bring this uh, photo book up front, and yeah, just for people to see it, it is really important. There's an importance in this kind of work, even though it is not done commercially. And hopefully, more photographers, because I think in Malaysia we have a lot, lot of photographers, but. Not so much um, a, a work or product like this has been put out. So maybe in five, ten years, we need to look into that and to work in an organized way. Yeah, but, but another issue is because we, we have no printer. I mean, that's like, I mean we, we do have printers, but if you want your book to, be, to look like, like just a normal coffee table book, and then yes, yes you do have, but if you need to make it more interesting, yeah, personalized. And it, if you look into the Indonesian uh, photo photography scene, they have um, a lot of like uh, independent photo maker and then they have a very interesting design, right? Yeah, even in Germany and Europe. Because in Malaysia, there's only like the, the normal like the normal uh, book, like comfortable book. Uh. So yeah, maybe that's why not not a lot. Of yeah, people printers here, printers here don't want to waste time with uh, yeah. difficult things. Yeah. They just want to make money really quickly and, and get you out of the door yeah. after you give them the check, of course. Yeah, so, so the photo book uh, society in Malaysia is, uh, I think, it's very, very small. We used to have that photo book. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have to use a photo book KL, but then that the, the, the main guy, he went to politics, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sold, he sold to the devil. Yeah, he sold, he sold, sold to the devil, so we don't have someone to... That uh, 
that that was a good thing lah. It's a good. Uh, they have a weekly photo book discussions, right? So now we we don't have a guy to do that. So if Maybe someone, you could yeah, be the guy. no, I, someone, I, I I'm I'm busy with my daughter, so <laughs> cannot. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> so if if someone out there have the passions uh, about photo books, so we we encourage this. So. It's actually you, what you seen here is a very small community. We know each other, and the printer is the same guy. <laughs> who is MIA now? Yeah, yeah, who is MIA? So that's why we don't have any recent works. <laughs> so uh, for that's why for any photographers in Malaysia, uh, young photographers, old photographers, if you have, if you if you really like to do photo book, just buy a printer, inject, print, and uh, do it yourself, self publish. At least. Uh, we cultivate the culture first, and then maybe the industry will follow. Yeah, but yeah, that's a long way to go. Absolutely. Um, questions? No questions. One more question. Yes. No. My name is Nuriana. I'm I'm a freelancer, I think so. <laughs> so um as said before by Hafiz, you said that um you have consideration in terms of set tone and the printer. Nick Adam as Nick Adam said. So I wonder as like Nadia from photographer to you know printing your own photo book, what kind of transition? I I'm not I mean, uh, Hafiz is very into bookmaking, right? Yes. And how about you, Nadia? What kind of consideration of things that you have um, to differentiate between being a photographer and then Google making? Uh, yeah. Well, um, I don't think I'm, uh, I'm making any transition. For me, I'm still a photographer yeah. like, uh, or like maybe a visual artist, <laughs> but. I uh, I think okay. <laughs> like I mean like for any for any photographer I mean it's uh, photo uh, photography I mean photographer and print making is I mean I think it goes in hand in hand because of course you want to see your photos in prints I mean like back in the film age you print print out your photos you develop and print and then in digital age you do still print your photos but mostly people like to keep it in like uh, what you call digital form? I mean, in social media, in uh, their, their computers, hard drives. So um, I think it, uh, photos are meant to be seen. I mean, when you when you take photos, you want you want to see it in the you want to hold it, uh, yeah, in, in in print form. You want it to hold it in your hand so that you can see actually see the colors, see the little details that you might miss if you look in in the, on the screen. So I I don't know. I mean. Um, Instead of just like like how you make it like you know, I mean I'm from I'm from Kedah, okay. so I'm not used into like this art book. Uh, I mean I went to the um uh, I I do went to the you know public library. However, the art book itself doesn't really relate with our Malaysian, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, scenery or photography. So I was wondering how you guys um, made a reference in terms of making photo books. You mean where, where we get our uh, yeah. ideas, yeah. inspiration? Yeah, inspiration, yeah. Oh, um, I don't know, maybe from uh, looking, looking, at other, uh, uh, looking at other people's work. I mean, like, um, because uh, back, back then I thought photo books are just like coffee table books, like I said just now, right? And then when I get exposed to other photo photographers and how they print out their uh, photograph, I mean photographs, uh, and then they make it like in such a way, uh, when you open the book and you want, you you feel like in awe, like oh, you, you can actually print like this. You don't have to print in a conventional way. There's other there are other ways for you to be like more creative, in uh, in terms of how you present your work. So yeah, that's that's how I get like ideas and inspiration to, oh, maybe I, I, I can do this instead of just make it like in a photo album, like, like site and I just, you know. <coughs> so does that answer your question? Yeah, I think just, uh, we, we 
really really can expand our imagination and creativity and just to 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 look into possibilities or to um, the, the the form the final form that we want to because when when I start I, I might don't have a solid idea on those things how this book look like so but throughout the process we try to print and try to imagine it more try to look into each photograph how to sequence it or what kind of effect or what kind of uh, visual that we want to present so throughout the process I think the process is the the most important thing and during that period you shouldn't hold back on yourself you should just flow with your creativity and explore more but of course uh, you just reference from other photo books or other works from other photographers outside from international photographers that helps too just to, to, to fit your imagination but when I want to do it on my own it's always um, looking for a different kind of thing different kind of taste maybe a small small bit but yeah that's what makes it interesting for me it, uh, I'm also from Kelantan, so I never been <laughs> exposed to all of this. So, yeah, uh, same as Nadia. What my interpretation of photo book is those days. My interpretation of photo book is a uh, uh, coffee table books. You know, it's very corporate, corporate feel. Uh, but then again, uh, this there's an exhibition, uh, Hajime exhibition that, that between three mountains. Yes. Uh, two mountains. Two mountains, sorry, two mountains only. Okay, <laughs> Japan and you know, three mountains. Okay, so uh, there, I I think he brought his. Uh, it's not a photo book. It's not a photo zine. It's like a. It's just a printed uh, photograph uh, put in a box. Yeah. So he printed himself. So we we were like, hey, we can do this. It's not that hard. We just buy a printer and then we print our work. You know. So that's how we. Uh, we that's how I. I was introduced, uh, inspired to do these zines, you know, not 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 doing coffee, coffee table book, not not limited to coffee table books in terms of printing photograph or sh showcasing your works. Yeah. Um. Maybe I can also add something. When, <laughs> when, I, when I think when all of us were growing up, uh, it was really difficult to have any inspiration. Uh, for anything, uh, because it was very little resources in this country. Um, I mean, there were certain resources available, but a lot of the other things not available. And I think with the advent of the internet, you started to see things online. And then you started to get a little bit more of a picture about what other people were doing. I think that served to be a big yeah. inspiration. I mean, like you just heard uh, Adam talk about Robert Frank's um, uh, Americans, you know, and you know, so so the thing is, obviously, these are things which uh, influences. But sometimes it's also because, um, at least when you're talking about photography, photography bookmaking, and photography books, there isn't much of a heritage. Not like the Japanese and yeah. you know, and many other people like I like the, the the Nordics, the Germans, you know, where you have this long heritage of bookmaking of, of photography, you know. So the thing is, uh, we are, you know, the only place that you can get uh, excited is uh, from work that's coming from outside. But I, but if you look at what's on that little bench over there, it's really interesting to me because it's. With very little resources and your ability to print, and you know, it's just everything's like really constricted. If you look at the work, it's actually very diverse in terms of uh, what is being shown, in terms of how it's being shown, how it's being put into a book form. It's actually very different, you know. And and if anything, I think there should be an analysis of this work that's here because it's very important work because this is the this is where it starts. You know, and I think uh, some universities or, or you know, uh, academicians should actually start looking at, at this stuff because um, here is where, where you start building uh, the idea of what is Malaysian photo books, what does Malaysian photography look like, and, and uh, what are the kind of narratives. Because if, and, uh, really, if, uh, if there are any uh, researcher writers in, in the room, I really, really, really um, want to encourage you to look at the stuff. There's a lot more books out there, this kind of stuff. I mean, this is just a sample of what we could get for this program, but there's a lot more. And we really need to start intellectually looking and writing about uh, work here, because that's the only way appreciation is going to come. Because if we don't 
look and analyze. Then you know, uh, young ladies like this, uh, this, uh, this lady here is, is going to have the same question 10, 20, 30 years down the line. Because you know, there's been no documentation, there's been no interest by academia, by, by, by the arts to actually uh, look into this stuff. And I think this is very, very important. Um, of course, it's still in its raw form. I think Elvin, Elvin and I also ha had a conversation. Uh, and it's like, you know, what is actually the form of Malaysian photography? I mean, uh, is, there, is there, I mean, when you talk about Japanese photography, bang, you get an idea of kind of uh, what it is. And the only reason you know what it is is because it's had a long history. You talk about German photography, you know, then bang, you know, you, you, you have an idea of what that trajectory is, where, where, where it emanates from and where it goes. You know, it's easy because that is, that, that you know, generations of tradition and of documenting and all that stuff. So the thing is, I think these these wonderful people here, and some in the audience have already put up really good stuff. This just needs to be looked at, needs to be talked about, needs to be written about. You know, and and I think some emphasis needs to come on the books before we can actually start to appreciate what's there. Because otherwise, if it's not done, then the appreciation is not going to happen. You know. So I think this is also quite important. So I think for you, I would say, um, here's where you start. You know, here's where you start. And, and, and th these are people who can actually give you a lot of information because uh, they have a lot of experience, not just in photography bookmaking, but a lot of other things as well, in terms of photography, uh, you know, in terms of everything, you know. And I think here's a great place to start. And you know, how wonderful it is now, after a whole bunch of years of complaining, <laughs> right, that, w that we didn't have anyone you've got someone, you know, so this is great. This is great, so this is progress, yeah? Okay, so, um, question? Um, <coughs> yes, I'm Rolf Steele from the German Cultural Center. Uh, Mr. Nick, I think you, you, you went to Frankfurt Book Fair this yes, year, didn't you? Yes. So I want to ask all of you, actually, um, why do you go to book fairs, and uh, is it important for you um, for the public, for the distribution of your books, and 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 on second question is, what do you take from from book fairs, um, whether they are small or big? Okay. Well, okay. Thank you. Okay. So, what <laughs> is for me to go into the Frankfurt Book Fair is more for for us lah, because I'm I'm representing Bukufixi, so it's more of exposure exposure in terms of uh, exposing our books to the world and also exposing myself to the other books from other parts other countries so it's more of exposure it's not although frankfurt book fair is a trade fair trading fair but we didn't do much trading there we just uh, meeting people we just uh, i'm just uh, browsing all the i'm trying to browse all the uh, booths all the publisher and seeing what what are the trends and how they do it in other countries. For example, I went to the there's there's a art book uh, section. So there's a lot of art books which, compared to Malaysia, we are way far behind. So what I took back is a there's a, a university Dortmund University. So the the students produce their own works and then they exhibit at the exhibition. So it's like it's very easy for them to do to do to print and publish works, but it's very hard for us. So so we try. I try to you know try to the gap is very big, but then we try to learn from them. So I I, I bring back all these interesting materials back. So and then we can show to our printer. This is how I want it. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, so it's very easy. So it's, uh, so Just then, it's, so it's very easy to expose. So I can expose to my friends and also expose to the printer, to the industry. This is what we want. Uh, so we want to. You have you have some copies of the stuff from yeah, Dortmund. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can yeah. probably have a look at that. I mean, though it's not Malaysian independent photo books, but <laughs> it's again a great way to look at what others are doing, and, uh, and because that's how we got here. We were looking at this stuff. You know, and b by looking at this stuff, we get to this stuff, and hopefully to you know be able to do more things. Yeah. Any? Okay, so we're coming to the last five minutes of our program. Uh, do we have any questions?
Dedi. Hi. Uh, I actually had a question, but you pretty much answered it already uh, just now. I was going to ask, um, how do you think having photo books can influence the culture in Malaysia and the art culture, and how to in increase and cultivate the culture among the youth, especially because it's really important, and Malaysia is lacking in that aspect. I was wondering how photo books you think that could help in, in that aspect, yeah. Are you a photographer? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm interested in um, videography, but yeah. Did you ask the same questions? I didn't. Uh, I, I, do we have other answers? No. No? <laughs> we don't. No, I think uh, it, it helps in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of artists. We have a lot of artists in Malaysia doing graphics and stuff. But then uh, they, they did not aware or did not have the same exposure as us uh, on how we can... Uh, translate the, their works into papers and then we can show to much larger crowd you know so we are we are more to exhibition where there is more exhibition but like Vic said exhibition is a very time frame time constraints and it's very it's only exposed to some people only not not very wide so what we did we always we print this and we bring it to art events KL art for grabs and stuff so these people they 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 come to our booth and then say, oh, oh, you can do this. Oh, where did you print? Where did you guys print it? How do you print it? So it's kind of a help to grow the, the culture. Because to be honest, uh, with this, uh, I've also uh, printed uh, uh, graphic designer like Otak Zubay, if you guys know him. Uh, help, uh, also do zines after seeing us. So also some few guys also doing their own prints and try to try to make the community bigger. So I think this this although it's small, but it, it gives some certain uh, uh, impact to the community. I think um, if we just juxtapose this event and if we had it in Japan, um, there'll be like ten times the crowd. Or India as well, but India's got a big population, so not fair. Um, and um, the other thing is that uh, everybody would be buying something, right? Um, to the point, like, uh, there's this really amazing uh, show by Daido Moriyama that happened a few years ago, and I think this has become a trend where he has an exhibition. And then what you can do is you can choose the photos that you want and photostat the photos and create your own book, staple bind, and then he sits down there and he signs it for you. Yep. Right? So the thing is, it's not the same product as this, but it's a very specific copy that you have based on photos that you selected. And you pay very little money for it. You know, uh, it just is, uh, you know, uh, and, and you have this thing. And you get to talk to the artist, you get to talk to, uh, to, uh, to, to understand, you know, and, and he looks at what you selected as well. It's like, wow, okay, interesting. So for him, it's also a way of understanding what people see in his work and what they take away. So that interactive process is very important. And in Japanese culture, something as silly as that, like, like we think, oh, for a stack, uh, no, I don't want for a stack because you're all Malaysians, right? <laughs> um, uh, uh, but, but for them, the reading of this copy is very different. This is a free copy. Does everybody have one? Right? You know why? Free photos inside. You know, you can't buy the stuff off the wall. The photos in here are free. Yeah? Uh, it's not a photo book. It's a small catalog. You know? Um, and uh, it's got, uh, you know, um, information about the stories and stuff like that. You know, this, 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 this is good. This is great. This is a good place to start. And the thing is, if you start to respect and value this, right? a lot of effort has been put into this little object. A lot of effort, a lot of copywriting, a lot of looking at stuff, <laughs> right? And understanding what goes where. Here, yeah, free, free for everyone, you know? Take a copy, give it to somebody else, you know? Because this is valuable. And how, how many people here would buy photo books? How many people here buy photo books? Buy. 
Good, okay. But everybody here is interested. So this is really encouraging because otherwise you won't be here. How many people here would buy a photo book? Would buy one after this talk. A little bit more interested, right? Okay, great. So because um, this book, this book is the whole exhibition, right? It's a hundred ringgit. Um, it's a hundred ringgit retail price, selling for seventy ringgit only. And the thing is, it was, it was. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to pimp this out to anyone to sell the book because you don't have to buy this book. You don't. You really don't need to buy this book. Right? So I'm not trying to be a salesman here. Well, oh, but here's what I'm saying. For 70 ringgit, you get a piece of this exhibition in a large format. You get photographs that are not here, not on this wall, which are here. You get a piece of these 12 young people talking about young people all across Southeast Asia. This is not a book of photographs per se. It is a cultural documentation, it is an artistic expression of a certain time and a certain age about certain people. So the thing is, I really, really think it's a very beautifully made book by Karin Kruse of uh, Dinak Publishing. And he's come to Malaysia a few times, I think a lot of you guys know him. Um, and he made this amazing book. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's an artistic and cultural piece, never to exist again. You know, and I think you should really, really think about it uh, on that pretext, not being a salesman at all. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I mean, you know, really, don't buy it. Don't buy it if you don't want to. You know, because the thing is, uh, what I'm saying is, um, and the other thing about photo books, I've got a huge library of photo books in, in <coughs> at home, and I think, I think I may have one of the biggest ones in KL. Um, and uh, especially of uh, books that are very hard to get, you know, small run. I have a uh, Nozomi Ijima's book, uh, eight copies, I've got one of it, you know, I've got stuff like that. So, um, yes, no, that, that's the other thing. I'm trying to actually get the work, the books out of my house into maybe, say, a gallery like Ilham, so that people can come and have a look at the books because it's no point it just staying in my house. But, but here, here's what I want to say. Um, at one point, I was thinking to myself, am I, am I going crazy? buying these books because after you've seen it once, it isn't no point to see it again, you know? And then something really amazing happened. After a few years, looking back at books, you start to read it completely differently. The book is the same, you have changed. How you see through your filters of your mind and your heart completely changes and the book becomes alive again. And you see things that you never saw before. You make relationships that you've never seen before and then bang, you got a new book. Right? For half the price. <laughs> right? And, and, and I think this is what's amazing. And these are things that you can share, you can, you can gift, you can, you know. And, and, and really, for these guys to make more products uh, for you to look at, for, for, for more people to tell stories, for, for more people to, for, for these things to exist, there must be people wanting to support it. You know, and I really think you should because this is our story. This is, this story is about ourselves. You know, it's about it's about um, Hafiz's family. It's about uh, Nadia's stories. About you know, about um, about herself, her family, about things around her. You know, it's about Nick's uh, vision of the city, dystopia, utopia. You know, this whole idea. So this is who we are. You know. One very interesting, uh, sorry to plug the Guten Institute, um, but one very interesting, um, one very interesting show I went to was at uh, Tuhang Kasturi in Ruang. And of all the bloody things, right, it was a show by this German photographer who's a bouncer at Berghain, <laughs> photographing Berghain. I was thinking like, you know, in my, in my little Malaysian brain, right, I was like, why would you bring this kind of work as a piece of German culture to Malaysia? You know, it's just weird, right? And then I was told by a very distinguished gentleman that culture, this was living German culture. This was alive. This was what was going on today, all right? And sometimes we are blind. Uh, we see culture as you know the crumbling buildings in Georgetown, you know Wayang Kulit, you know, which is great. But that is culture of the past. 
But what we have to open our eyes and become really aware is these stories on the wall. Right? Because this is culture of today. This is who we are today. Right? And the premise of the We Will Have Been Young show is also about that. It's about who you are today, your visions of the future, and, 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 you know, and, and how you exist. You know, we are all young. We'll be forever young. We'll be one day old looking back at our youth. And that is the mirror back to us. Photographs work the same way. They are mirrors and portals back to our past. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Uh, Nick Adam uh, of Fixie. Hafiz Hamza. <laughs> Uh, Obscura Malaysia, Nadia J. Marfix. A very, very special thank you to uh, Ilham Gallery for hosting this show. Uh, w without Ilham, we wouldn't have such a beautiful venue. Uh, and also to um, the Gut Institute for, for supporting this, Mr. Rolf Schiller, Miriam Hager, thank you for being here. Thank, um, and to uh, the wonderful uh, people from uh, Ostkreuz for photography agency in Berlin who uh, ran the programs with us uh, um, on behalf of uh, Obscura Festival. Thanks for being here. And you know, this is very interesting. The, the 12 photographers who made the work here are going to go to uh, uh, Frankfurt for the show there. And then they'll be, uh, like I said earlier, they'll be going on a tour and stuff like that. And then they'll be going to Berlin and doing the same thing. So Elvin, Elvin is here. So Elvin is one of the photographers. Um, and uh, I think uh, this is a wonderful opportunity that was made possible uh, by, by the generous uh, and also very, very uh, heartfelt uh, support of the Goethe Institute. And I think this is what makes things go forward. So I hope, you know, in the future, we're going to make some really amazing things and really make some things happen because I think, I think it's a really exciting time to be in Malaysia. And to all of you, jangan putus asa. You know, you know it, I mean, which means uh, don't, don't, don't lose your hope and your, uh, don't give up, yeah. Because, um, because really, this is the time. Things are not going to be easy. It never, ever is. Ever. Yeah, that's how legends are made, right? Okay, so yeah, don't give up and you know, thanks very much for being here. Um, shows around again, we will have been young book is upstairs. Um, my only hope is that this book circulates more within the Malaysian public, so that's why I want you to buy it. I do not a cent goes into my pocket, so you know, um, I wish, uh, maybe I should. <laughs> no, joking. Yeah, 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 not a cent goes to my pocket. I really want this book to circulate. I really believe in the book. The book will tell you a story now. It will tell you another story in five years from now. Please support it. Thank you for being here. You're a wonderful audience. If you like the show, please tell your friends, tell your family to come. Uh, we are on Instagram, Obscura Festival um, and Ilham Gallery, Good Institutes on Facebook, not yet on Instagram, but yeah. So see you guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.